Gershon, thank you for joining us. Welcome back to the program. Uh, you have been a, a reference for us, an expert voice throughout this horrific year since October 7th and those attacks. Uh, mastermind of those attacks, as we noted, is now dead. I'm wondering how this factors into where you see the path to a potential ceasefire and hostage release deal. Well, it is a moment of opportunity, I hope, but it could also be a dire moment for the future of these hostages. There is a rumor uh, spread by Hamas that Yehia Sinwar gave orders to the people holding hostages that should he be executed, should he be killed, that they should kill the remaining hostages. We don't know if this is true. At the same time, it is a moment of opportunity, and I appealed last night to the Israeli government to spread leaflets around the Gaza Strip from the air saying that anyone who's holding a hostage and is willing to give them up, that they will be granted safe passage for themselves and their families out of Gaza with a bundle full of money so that they could start a new life somewhere else. This might be a way to save some of the hostages. And I also call on the Israeli government to notify Egypt and Qatar that they are willing to immediately uh, renew negotiations and to speed them up, not on the deal that's been on the table now for four months, but on the deal that Hamas told me they would accept which is a three-week deal to end the war, free the hostages, release Palestinian prisoners. And my understanding is that Hamas is willing to give up governmental control over Gaza as well to a civilian professional technocratic government, which they are not a part of. Was this deal that you speak of now, um, that you say Hamas was willing to sign off on, uh, was that signed off officially by uh, Gia Sinwar himself? Because as you know, you don't even have to uh, speak for the, the Israeli government. It was the Biden administration that up until his death said that he was the biggest impediment at this point, as of late, um, for a peace deal. Right. I heard from two different uh, Hamas sources, two members of the political bureau of Hamas, one of them a member of the Hamas negotiating team that the entire leadership stood behind this deal. The problem was that they were not willing to come out and say it because as Hamas negotiates, and I know this from 18 years of negotiating with them, anything that they present at their initiative is seen by themselves as a concession and weakens their position in negotiations. So we've been stuck for more than a month now where this deal has been on the table. President Biden has seen it as well as Gret Brett McGurk, his emissary, and Bill Burns, the head of the CIA. The prime minister of Israel has seen it. The head of the intelligence in Egypt and the prime minister of Qatar all know this deal is on the table, but it's been almost impossible to get verification on it. Uh, which has caused us to be stuck for quite some time. I'm hoping that this killing of Yahya Sinwar might be a turning point where maybe the Hamas leadership, which is primarily based abroad now, will make a decision that its primary interest is to end the war. And of course, Mr. Netanyahu who has to make a decision that his primary interest now is to declare victory and bring the hostages home. Let's talk about this leadership vacuum uh, that has um, been only widened now since the death uh, of Yahya, the killing of Yahya Sinwar. The only remaining uh, figurehead inside Gaza that we believe still to be alive is his brother, Mohammed uh, Sinwar, and he oversees the group's day-to-day -day military operations. All other remaining leadership remains outside of the country, uh, the majority of them exiled in Qatar, Khaled uh, Mashal, um, Khalil al Haya, who was um, uh, Sinwar's deputy. Do you do you think any of these three men um, are in the position to be more flexible uh, about negotiating at this point and coming up and agreeing to a deal that sees the, the war stopping and the hostages coming home? There, there are still members of the Shura Council, the Hamas leadership that are in Gaza, who are not so well known to the international community. And of course, Mohammed Sinwar, Yahya Sinwar's brother, is in charge of military operations. He's not a political leader, so he won't have a say in the decision. The leadership, which is outside primarily in Doha, but also in Istanbul and in Beirut, really need to make a decision if Hamas is going to survive as part of the political uh, framework of the Palestinian national movement. And this is a decision which I believe they need to make now that their military struggle is over. Uh, they need to have a political struggle. Hopefully they can transform themselves into a, a non-military political party within the Palestinian arena. The question is, if they do make an agreement with Israel, do they have the power and the ability to enforce it in Gaza? Can they ensure that the Israeli hostages will be released? And this is not known. The, the, this will have to be a test uh, once there are advanced negotiations and agreement is reached. 
and then we'll see if the people in Gaza are going to release the hostages or not. Of course, Israel's going to have to pay a price as well, and Israel will have to release Palestinian prisoners. And this will be the, the quid pro quo here that will be tested in real time as Israel agrees to release prisoners. Hamas will agree to release hostages, and then we'll need to see if the war does in fact end, because without ending the war, this won't, this won't come to a pretty picture either.